Yeah, thanks a lot for having me. Um, today I want to talk to you about a project that we've been working on since 2009. Um, maybe I'll tell you a little bit about Kaiti first. Uh, BMW Kaiti is a 100% uh, owned by the BMW Group, and uh, we focus on uh, IT uh, based around car. So we're not doing any industry 4.0 uh, stuff. We're not doing anything to do with uh, you know, getting your car serviced in the, in the uh, service stations or not. We're, we're mostly working on solutions that are then being built into vehicle ECUs. Uh, in, in series. So um, today I want to talk to you not directly about my project joiner, but sort of how we got to having this project and what the project's trying to do. Because um, basically joiner um, sits on top of a lot of the stuff that you've um, been hearing about today. And of course one of the main questions we get asked is, well why don't you just why don't you just use MQTT? You know it's a standard. Uh, just take MQTT, use that, uh, it already does everything you need to do. Um, why are you building your own thing? Um, I'm pretty sure that um, currently we're very open-minded. We don't have this sort of not invented here syndrome that you sometimes hear about. We're really super happy to use open source software. And of course, we also want to contribute to the open source community. Um, that's why Joiner is also open source software itself. Um, it's open source software based on an awful lot of other open source software. Um, and as you're going to see also on MQTT. Um, but we discovered when we were looking at the uh, telematics functions that were in um, the vehicles already for the connected drive uh, features that we offer in our BMW and Mini and Rolls-Royce vehicles, um, we noticed that the architecture behind a lot of these systems was really vertical. Um, every solution was, every, every use case was solving every problem itself. Um, and as I probably don't have to uh, convince you, um, that's, that's not the best way, if you're, if you're a large organization, the best way to solve your problems. So I just want to work through some of the problems that we saw and, um, and how that sort of maps to the thinking that we had in Joiner, and at the end we'll see sort of what our basic overall solution looks like. So in order to do this, I want to walk through a sample use case. This use case doesn't exist necessarily, or maybe it does, there's you know, like that disclaimer in movies, any similarity to actual events is purely coincidental. Um, but I just wanted to use sort of a halfway realistic use case for you so you can get an idea of what we're trying to do. So let's imagine that we're making a, a my traffic use case. We want to be able to send traffic information to the Navi of a vehicle so that it can show you know, where, where there's uh, problems, where there's uh, a traffic jam on the, on the highway. Okay, so let's uh, just say we're, we're starting off, we're a, a, a little research group, maybe we're working with some, some students from the university, and we're doing a little sort of uh, POC of this use case, and we're, we're trying to Try to figure out our requirements. So we're going to have some sort of a geocast, right? We want to have the vehicles in a certain segment of the highway getting traffic information from that segment of the highway, All right? So we're going to have our vehicles making subscriptions based on their location, um, and when an update gets published to one segment of the highway, of course, the vehicles on that segment should get it, and the other vehicle on the other segment should get his updates, right? So this is really classical pub sub stuff that everybody already has seen who's played with MQTT. Um, so when, when this little group is trying to make this, this one my traffic um, use case, uh, perhaps they go on to Google and you know, they think about all the different kinds of things out there that you can use, maybe also from the Eclipse IoT working group, um, to build this as fast as they can, right? And they get hit by this sort of bomb of buzzwords and different capabilities of different systems and maybe they do a little bit of research, um, and maybe they pick one. So they pick MQTT. Um, one really nice thing about uh, MQTT, of course, is it maps directly to the pub sub that we just finished seeing, right? Um, TCP IP uh, communication is how the telematics uh, functions in the vehicle are working anyway, so it seems like a really nice fit. So this use case decides, let's build on top of MQTT. Um, so the next thing that happens is when you have MQTT, as I'm sure you all know, you have to define your topics, right? So this use case starts deciding how the topic's gonna look. They're gonna call it, you know, they're called sample application. And if you subscribe to a traffic topic, um, you can receive traffic updates and you can uh, also say you wanna get accident updates. And, you know, then you just have to start modeling what your accident looks like, the data that you're gonna be receiving back has to also have a certain format so that you can parse it correctly. The same will apply for traffic. You'll also have to somehow say where you're at. Um, so you have to start putting all of that logic into your topic structure, right? This is just perfectly normal MQTT development. But in our language, in, in Joiner, we call that modeling. 
And we didn't want everybody to be inventing how to do this themselves. We wanted to have it, like my original uh, strategy was to have this the same for the whole group. So we decided to take Franca IDL, uh, which is also an Eclipse project, uh, and use that for our modeling. Mm -hmm. So the next thing that happens to this, uh, this little group that's uh, developing this, uh, this feature is they decide they want to maybe trigger the vehicle at some point. Right? So they start, um, they, make it, they make a new um, interface, they uh, maybe make that work, they, they invent a trigger ID that they're going to use, uh, that they're going to send down to the vehicle, and the vehicle should reply with that trigger ID in order to say that it's processed whatever the trigger was supposed to do. Um, in, in, in this case, maybe also in, in the reverse case, maybe the vehicle also wants to do something similar to the back end. It wants to send data to the back end and then know that the back end has received that information, right? So in this detected accident scenario, again, we're going to model some new, some new topics here. Um, we're going to send a, a, an accident data set that we'll also have to model, of course, to the back end. And then we want to receive a, a verification of the back end that that's been processed, right? So what we just finished doing um, is we just sort of invented how to do RPC on top of MQTT, which MQTT doesn't offer, right? But again, we don't want everybody to invent how to do this themselves, so we have to figure out how to do that in a certain kind of way. So the next thing that this uh, uh, group is doing is, you know, maybe up until now they've been programming in Java and they were just using Java serialized maybe to send the data over the wire because it was the easiest thing to do. And then they realize that's probably not the best thing to do because later they're going to be um, talking to ECUs that don't have Java VMs on them. So they, again, go onto the internet and start Googling how to serialize data, come up with a couple of sort of standard solutions, um, and they pick one. So now here we have to standardize how to do our serialization. So now they have a new problem. Now they, maybe the, uh, the people from the, the, you know, like the automated driving vehicles, um, they need super exact maps, right? So it doesn't help to say that there's an accident in a certain segment of the Autobahn. Maybe you want to somehow make a really detailed geometric shape around the, 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 the debris on the, on the road or something like that. Again, I'm completely making this stuff up. This isn't actually necessarily happening in any actual projects. This is an example. So you've changed your interface now, though. So now you're expecting to be able to subscribe to this blocked shape as opposed to which lane of traffic, right? You mod modified your interface. Um, and again, it's not really hard to solve if you're just a project by yourself. You can maybe add a sort of a version tag into your topic name, for instance. Um, but again, you've, you've invented all on your own just for yourself. You've invented how to do versioning in your interface. So let's just say that they've now sort of reached, they've been developing for a few years now, they've got a solution that sort of works for all the different vehicles that they want to have on the street. They roll this into production, um, it's driving around for a bit, and then uh, this, this headline, we got that. Um, somehow somebody's figured out how to bring messages into our system and, and you know, this, they're blocking whole segments of the Audubon because they're making these blocked shapes for our autonomous, autonomous driving vehicles maybe and you know they won't drive there anymore because they think that there's an accident there right well, the, the guys who invented maybe invented this use case forgot uh, to build data integrity into the system right but let's say they you know they do this big recall of who knows what and roll it all out again and it costs lots of money um, but they get it all fixed um, until the next problem happens new privacy laws come into effect. I don't know if you've noticed before, but my topics were all based on the vehicle identification number. The vehicle identification number is personal information, has to be protected in an extra special way starting in 2018. The guys maybe forgot to consider that when they were doing their topic structure. So now they have to redo the whole topic structure and release some sort of database in the back that's mapping from the VIN to some sort of a special trigger recipient ID for these triggers that they want to send to the vehicles because they can't just address them by the VIN. Uh, and again, you have a whole recall and whole, you know, changing the software and all kinds of stuff like that. Again, a very costly change to make. Um, yeah, I know there you've, you, you've uh, reinvented for yourself in this particular case how to do a mapping from one thing to another. For me, that's just generalized, I will call that discovery, right? Because you want, you want to do a certain kind of lookup, you're looking for a bin, and you want to get some sort of a logical address that's associated with that. So let's say now this is our architecture that we've invented for our little My Traffic application. 
and has all of these various different features. The problem is, is that at exactly the same time we were doing this, there's for sure at least four, five, six, 10, 20 other projects at the BMW group working on exactly the same problems, not talking to each other and solving the same thing differently. Um, here's sort of an overview of all the various different features that we want to be able to cover. We want to have end-to-end -end encryption uh, for anything that's personal data. We have to have standardized serialization, data integrity, so that only the requestee is allowed to do it. Um, is that able to make a particular request? And the response that's coming back from the server can be um, um, also uh, proven to actually originate from that particular server. Um, we want to support all of the uh, features that you can model in Franca. That's um, events or broadcasts, remote procedure call and pub sub. We want to be able to do a discovery, so we can uh, do a lookup on a, a uh, particular domain, as we call it, for instance, a VIN, and get a mapping to a logical address. That address should map further than is required just for the anonymization use case. In our case, it actually maps to a, an address that is associated with the underlying uh, middleware technologies. Um, and of course, we have to solve the modeling or formal specification problem and the versioning problem. Different things that we had all there, they all become the joiner solution. So, like I said before, we're open source software. Um, the joiner project is on GitHub. You can reach us through this, uh, this shortcut, joiner.io. Um, Currently, the maintenance uh, is at BMW Power IT, um, although we would, of course, welcome contributions from anybody. Um, and we are also very interested in trying to figure out how we can fit in or how we can compartmentalize parts of our solution in order to uh, maybe become part of an IoT stack or, uh, or start using more of an IoT stack in the future. Thank you. Questions for, for David? Yeah. Yes. I have a very provocative. Is MQTT in the end the right protocol? <laughs> because you have to have to reinvent your own ecosystem around it. What, what and when I look at other protocols, they will bring this one. Yeah, uh, which ones, for instance? Uh, which ones? I don't want to name the CUA again, but for example, how does that be presented to you as part of the CUA? That's, that's true. I, I actually um, I see a lot of overlap actually there, so that's something we can look at. That. Um, if this question, then, that, of course, then though, is, is if that's really a protocol, right? Or if it's a stack, kind of like Joiner is also a stack. The, the two are coming from, I think, were probably developed at relatively similar times. I mean, we've been working on this since 2009. Um, the one coming more from the sort of industry side and us coming more from the telematics side. Of course, it'd be a really interesting discussion to see where the, where the overlap is and, and which bits of various different protocols can be used by the, by the other. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's also to some extent also a, va a validation when I see all of the thinking that went into uh, to that because I see a lot of the same stuff that we have um, and yeah, not copied, but just kind of sort of came to similar solutions, yeah. Maybe also that these three guys can learn from you from your experience. So is BMW using Joiner in, in cars now or is that not your intention? No, in 2018. Perfect. So we're currently in series development for 2018. Okay. Any other questions? I just want to make more of a comment and an invitation, which is the project model that we have. Uh, we, Red Hat, and some others are working on it actually does cover a lot of the same, uh, uh, say, functional scope of what you guys have in mind. Here. So we should definitely follow up. There's a lot of opportunity. Yeah, that'd be super. Yeah, one, one thing I don't have in this presentation, but maybe I can just give you also a bit of background when MTC was chosen actually as the base um, uh, protocol. Um, the colleagues from the back end, from the operation side, um, so basically, Joiner is supposed to abstract away from all of those underlying transport protocols. And um, when, do you want to set up? Right? When um, and before that, we were based on HTTP, right? Because that was the standard of BMW. Um, when they started looking at the kind of scaling that they would require, though, to, to roll this out to the whole fleet, um, they looked at a lot of different solutions, uh, including Co-op, actually. 
And as far as I understood it, the reason co-op wasn't chosen was because it was lacking in adequate server infrastructure that could handle that kind of scaling that they needed. And uh, with MQGT, they had the choice of uh, DC Square's product, HiveMQ, and products from IBM. Um, and those um, were both sort of in running, um, you know, and, and good enough to be able to handle the kind of scaling that was required by BMW. But um, other protocols just didn't hack it yet from the server infrastructure standpoint. Not from the concept uh, and whatnot, but just from being able to deploy it in a really large environment. Our goal of Plum was to make a multi-protocol um, capable stack that solves many of those same problems. Yeah. So you guys should definitely talk. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Hey, Todd. Okay, so, so our next, so thank you very much, David. So I think I broke it. <laughs> um, Kai, can you help? No, I was this one. No, you can help with that? <laughs>